In this episode, you will discover the numbers and stats for successful sales, how to properly follow up, and how to 4x your sales with proper follow up. My guest today is Amanda Abeya. Welcome, Amanda. Amanda? Thank you for having me. I'm so looking forward to this. We've been planning it for a minute. And uh, as soon as we met, we were like, oh, we got to do something. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me do the proper introduction uh, uh, for Amanda. And we're going to talk about getting over the fear of follow up, which is an important topic, uh, very near and dear to my heart and to Amanda's heart. I run a business around that topic, and Amanda runs a business around that. So we could probably talk about this for five days. Yes, we could. Not get tired. So yeah. Amanda Abeya is an award winning content creator keynote speaker and business coach who specializes in helping business owners activate their persuasion prowess so they can make more money and live a more affluent life her clients go from hating sales and marketing to achieving 90 percent closing rates and closing multiple five-figure deals her work has been featured in forbes huffington post business insider univision and many more welcome amanda thank you for having me so excited Great. to dive in absolutely how has the new year been treating you so far very busy we got a feature in entrepreneur last week which was great all about uh the lost human skills people need in order to be good at sales uh, yep. AI, AI dropped, which is very exciting for marketing. Uh, we'll get into it, but I was actually a content marketer for eight years. So very excited about the AI and my team is cranking. My, my team is rolling. We finished all our systems and processes and it's marketing and sales all day long for us and working with oh, our we're clients. I'm going to dive into AI. You know what? <laughs> one of the things I've been getting chat GPT to, to do for me is getting to getting them to getting it to make my content funny. Oh, really? And it does a beautiful job. I was not that impressed with chat GPT for writing sales copy. I'm going to have to go back and try it again. I haven't I done was, a separate sales copy. but yeah. um, I was doing a copy AI. And with copy AI, you can change the tone to like funny or friendly or persuasive or professional. Yeah, it's pretty good. Copy.ai, is that what it is? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, I'll go check it out. I have not looked at that. All right, so um, let's dive into it. Amanda, what is your story? Well, <laughs> my story starts 14 years ago. Um, they're like, but you look so young. I was young. <laughs> so basically what happened was I graduated from college in 2010 and I could not find a job. Um, if you're old enough, you remember 2008. It was a disaster. It was a nightmare. Well, imagine coming of age and into the market for the first time on the back end of that and on top of that i was in florida and florida's unemployment rate i believe was way higher than the national average i think the national average was like nine percent and miami-dade county was like 14 percent. i couldn't find anything i was like and i look look i have immigrant parents i work right i was like i'll be a barista i will clean floors i will do anything okay <laughs> i will do anything for a coin let's go right. Right. Um, but none of that was working. And a friend of mine, I was really struggling. I mean, I was having panic attacks. I got my quarter life crisis a little early. It was like this very jarring, the whole go to school, get a job thing is a lie, <laughs> you know, and with immigrant parents, or at least, you know, Latin immigrants, a lot of it is like, oh, well, you go to school and you get a job and you become a professional because that's what you do in America in order to get the american dream and i'm like well the american dream's a lie <laughs> but i was like 22 or at least the way that it's portrayed uh to be so a friend of mine saw that i was struggling he was in a lot of these online spaces he made money in such weird ways i mean i think he would like flip starbucks coffee on ebay and stuff like that and he was always traveling all over the place this guy was like my cousin and um which by the way when latinos say cousin right they're not they don't necessarily are actually our cousin. Right. <laughs> they're, just, they're just good friends, like family friends. So he hands me a book called The Art of Nonconformity by Chris Guillebeau. I think it was Chris Guillebeau's first book. 
And in the book, it starts talking about, well, you can make money on the internet. You can do whatever you need to do. Like who, who said I, it was just perfect timing. And I went, why has nobody ever told me this before? Like, why is this the first time I'm hearing this? So I just, I just went in. I mean, I remember spending like 12 hours in pajamas, Googling how to make money writing because up until that point, I, I had a literature degree. I was in journalism in high school. The only freaking thing I knew how to do was write. So I was like, okay, well, how do I do that? And what I didn't realize at the time that now I see is previous to that, I had sales jobs. It's just that nobody ever told me I was in sales. I was fundraising. I was doing tours. I mean, it's literally sales, but nobody ever told me. So that click wouldn't come until like eight years later. So what happened was I Googled how to make money writing. I end up creating an entire business as a financial writer and financial expert, even though I knew nothing about money. My blog was literally like, I know nothing about money. I'm just learning as I go along and I'm going to share the ups and the downs. Who wants to come with me? And that turned into an eight year career where I was doing content marketing for financial companies. So I was writing their blogs and things like that. About six years in, I start running into a problem. And that problem is I cannot scale that business, right? Because I was doing per project, which means the only way for me to make more money would be to take on more clients. And like I was at max capacity. I was hitting that six figures and my hand, my hands were literally cramping. Like that's how much content I was pushing out. We didn't have AI back then. <laughs> For sure. We didn't have AI back then. So literally my hands were like starting to cramp and be very painful. And, and I was also exhausted and tired. And I was like, I need a different business model. Up until that point, people had been asking me, well, how did you build the first business? So I started teaching them and I turned it at the time. It was like a six week program. I taught them how to put offers together. I taught them marketing. I taught them sales. I made more money in two weeks trading less time for money than I met that I made writing in a month. And I was like, whoa, still did not know that I was good at sales because, oh, I forgot this part. So there was a part in that story a couple of years prior where I tried to sell one-on-one -on -one coaching and consulting packages. I, back then I didn't really know about offers or none of that. So I had done like a, a class in front of 200 women, 60 of them booked consultations and all 60 told me no. It was brutal. <laughs> so I was like, whatever, I'm going to give up on the coaching thing and went back to writing. Two years later, people are asking me how I built it. I think I'm horrible at sales because of that experience. Again, not realizing that I'd been in sales since I was 20 and no one had really connected the dots for me. So I'm here walking around with a story like I suck. I suck at this. There's no way this is going to work for me. And I was working with a mentor. We did a sales role play. And she's like, you're really good. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't understand. And she goes, yeah, just do this one tweak. And then suddenly it was like, boom, I was closing everybody. I was just like sending emails, picking up the phone, and I was closing everybody. So we've been running that program for five years. And about three years in, we start realizing that the majority of our clients where they had the biggest issue and the biggest problem was in lack of sales skills. Because in my industry, our industry, but particularly in the women's spaces, I don't know about the guys, but in the women's spaces, they're getting a lot of like marketing and manifesting, but nobody's really teaching them how to close a deal. Yeah. So that we noticed that was a huge issue. We had clients coming to us who'd spent $25,000 on training programs. They had offers, they had funnels, they had marketing, they had systems. They just couldn't close and they couldn't handle objections. And they didn't know follow up and they didn't know how to convert someone in the DMs into a, a sales call. They didn't know how to qualify. They didn't know any of these things. Mm -hmm. So those clients started getting crazy results really quickly, like within a week, of course, because they have leads and they have an offer. They just don't have sales skills. We give them the sales skills. They start generating sales within three days. And my team and I are like, whoa. And we noticed, okay, this is the thing. This is what we're going to go in on. We teach sales systems, sales process, and sales skills. And we focus on women because I'm not one of these women, but 
a lot of women will Google sales training and they just see guys like Grant Cardone, who I have mad respect for, right? Grant Cardone or Brian Tracy or all these old white guys. And they're like, I, I don't relate. They seem really pushy. I don't like it. They seem super aggressive. I don't want to do that. So I was like, well, I had to learn from all these guys. How do I translate it and make it make sense? Because and this is a whole other topic we probably don't even have time for. But the way men relate to sales and the way women relate to sales, totally different. Totally different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We just speak different languages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, what do you do these days and who do you serve? So we work with women coaches, consultants, uh, course creators, experts, and we teach them sales skills. So often, oftentimes we're working with women who already have leads. Either they have a Facebook group or some sort of an email list or a database, access to people on social media. They're generating leads. They just don't know how to move those leads through a sales process. Or the other thing that happens is they'll get on sales calls and they don't know how to handle, I can't afford it. I need to think about it. Let me go talk to you. Like literally this morning, I saw someone post something about, um, you know, when they say I need to think about it, someone had posted something, he's learning sales, I know who he is. And he's like, look, when they say I need to think about it, I can't afford it, I need to go talk to my spouse. It's just a nice way of telling you no. They're just afraid of telling you no. Everybody in the comments was disagreeing with the guy, except me, the actual sales trainer. But people were literally in the comments like, yeah, you know, I trust them to make their own decisions. I won't even follow up. And I'm like, y'all are broke, aren't you? Like. <laughs> Like you're not really generating money, are you? Because yeah. they're, they don't, they just don't understand, yeah. right? So part of what we do is we help women understand the psychology of sales. Just this week, I got told I was going to hell <laughs> for teaching sales and persuasion on YouTube. So the first thing we have to do is change people's minds about what sales actually is and isn't. Somebody say you're going to hell? Oh uh, yeah, someone talk? on YouTube said I was going to hell because I teach persuasion and sales. I think that person is going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate, I'm going to hell for so many different things. It I think that happen. person might be in hell already. <laughs> probably, know. probably, right? Yeah, but apparently yeah. everybody who teaches sales, you know, we're all slimy, we're all manipulating people, we're all going to hell and we're all doing horrible things. Why and I, do you think, why do you think people think that way? Or so some people sit, think so negatively about sales. Oh, I know exactly why. And I can tell why? you from being a financial writer, two things, right? Number one, we all have really messed up beliefs about money and ourselves. Okay. That comes down to societal conditioning. So people literally think they're doing something wrong if they're making money. That's an issue. Or, you know, I mean, I have a, a team member that this, this happened to her. Now, this doesn't happen to me. I'm Cuban. My family fled communism. We are all about the capitalism and making money. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, not everybody gets that story, right? So I have a team member who didn't get that story. I have a team member. She was from another Latin American country. And the story that she got was that rich people are jerks. And they must have done something terrible in order to make that money. So when she started learning how to sell, of course, she was coming up against a lot of issues because she'd been told her entire life that, People who have money are jerks and she didn't want to be a jerk, of course. So there's a lot of <clears throat> internal conflict because we have um, really we have really messed up beliefs and views about money and people with money um, and capitalism. That's the one now, right? Like everybody railing against capitalism. I'm like, my family fled communism. Would you like to try that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think these people the, that, that they don't like it should like probably live in a poor country or in some cap. Uh, you're like you're benefiting country. from capitalism. Like, yeah. did you buy something from Amazon today? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, so and a lot of people so, who say that also. That's the other thing, and I think sometimes immigrants know that we're like, I mean, y'all have yeah. it pretty good here. <laughs> I'm, I'm an immigrant. I, I totally get what you're saying. Where are you from? I'm Iranian Canadian. You know what? I had an idea. I didn't know that you were from Iran, but every time I talk to someone from Iran, they're like, "Yeah, we get it. Oh, we yeah. get it. Yeah, because you come to the to the Americas, right? And you're like, y'all have it easy. Do you know what our governments do to people? <laughs> yeah, like the first world problems. People are like, "Oh my God, I can't believe my dog didn't like his food today. I'm sad about it." 
Yeah, yeah or like, they treat like, their no Facebook problem. wall like their therapist, which is yeah. odd, but that's a whole other thing. Anyway. Um, yeah, every time I talk to someone from Iran, it's like, like we just get it. Or somebody from Eastern Europe, like, we, like we're here. We just yeah. get it. Oh, yeah. Anybody who's really been through it, like we just, un- even if it's not the same country or the same culture, there's so many similarities that we're just like, yeah, right like, here. Oh, absolutely. Big time. Where, where do you live right now? Miami. Miami, Florida. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is everybody's had some amateur trying to shove a product down their throat in the DMs and nobody wants to do that. Yeah. I have my theory on top of uh, uh, another reason. What's your reason? I'm intrigued. I think people hate sales because in a way or two, we're all salespeople and we're all trying to persuade each other all day long to do different things. I just posted about that just now. Really? Before we came live. I said, you all think sales is manipulation, but we're all manipulating each other all day long. It's just some people. It's just that some people use it to help others and make money. (laughs) But we're all manipulating each other all day long. Hundred percent. Like if you're if you're convincing someone to go on a date with you, that's sales. If you're convincing yep. someone to do something for you, or you do something for them, any any sort of sort of convincing or persuasion is sales. I had and to ask somebody to go give my cat medicine because I'm going to be on this live stream. That is sales. Yeah, I, I think that's another reason why people hate it because they do it all all day long. <laughs> well, I think they do it all day long, but they don't know they're doing it all day long. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Once they Again, realize they're doing it all day long, then it starts changing their mind a little bit. 100%. Gang, if you're watching or listening, we're going to talking about getting over the fear of follow-up. If you have any questions about sales or follow-up, put them in a comment uh, and we'll go over it. And please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, write a review on whichever channel you're watching or listening. So Amanda, what do you see as biggest problems in sales? What a loaded question. Where do I start? (laughs) That's a big question. That's a let's go with the top two or three problems. Okay. Recurring or repeating problems. I know Um, you want to walk. I think one of them, you'll probably agree with this, is um, I don't think people have the proper expectations, particularly on the internet. And what I mean by that is I don't think people realize the amount of effort they need to put into getting a deal across the table. That's right. Especially online. They're like, oh, I'm just going to post. And then people are just going to slide into my DMs. And then I'm going to magically make money. (laughs) And it's like, no, not quite. Not quite like that. So I think that's a big problem. And that's, you know, we can blame online marketers for that. Um, we're just like selling that's people right. stuff that's not I, even I, real. I set up a landing page and you next thing you know, within a week, I got multiple six figures. Oh, at least you get that. <clears throat> the women are like, oh, just getting my energetic frequency and I'm going to make <laughs> money. No, not quite. Not I tried quite like it. that. It didn't quite yeah, work. You, you tried it? It didn't work? Yeah. Um, so I think that's number one is people just don't have the proper expectations about sales. And that could be, you know, in the beginning when you're trying to get sales calls booked, but it's also on the back end with follow-up where people don't realize just how often they have to follow up just to get someone's attention. Yeah. So I think that's a problem. And I think the other biggest problem is they make it very transactional because they think that's what sales is. So for example, I had a YouTube video and I was like, this is why people aren't buying from you. And one of the things that I said was you haven't given someone enough value to trust you. And people were like, well, how do I do that? Which they're going to get a video explaining that. But a lot of times people just make it very transactional. I made a joke today where I was like on Facebook, they friend request you and then connect you. And in the first two sentences, they're pitching you on LinkedIn. They connect with you and send you a sales pitch as long as the Bible. That's right. (laughs) And they keep following up saying, did you read my Bible and you haven't still there, still there, (laughs) still there. And none of that stuff actually works. So it's not even, it's not even, it's not even interesting, not even good copy. Like write a book. Like, did you read that? Like, hell no. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that's problem number two is, you know, there's a broad, really bad sales training out here. I don't know who's teaching this stuff. I mean, I've seen sales scripts from some of the top online trainings online. And I mean, from online marketers, not from well-known sales trainers. 
I mean, I've seen sales scripts from online marketers and well-known coaches. It's scary. It's really scary. I mean, it is like borderline abusive to buyers. So I think that's a part of the issue is there's horrible training out here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, horrible training. I'm going to put that down. But what do you what do you see as this uh, what do you see as the solutions to some of those problems? I think solution number one. Where do Forward, I want to go with proper that? expectation. How do, what's the solution to that? Yeah. So proper expectation is what I'm doing. Like um, I just give it to people straight, no chaser. And I'm like, hey, look, here are the numbers. Here's the data. I'm on a live stream every day. And I'm like, what's your number? What's the data? How many times do you have to reach out? How many times do you have to do this? And it's very interesting because I've been doing more of that in the last few months because, you know, now that all my systems are built, that's like literally my job is just to be visible. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me and be like, oh, your content is so different from everybody else's. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just telling you the truth. So isn't that crazy that we're living in a world where I'm telling people proper expectations and the truth and they're like, you're so different. I'm so attracted to you. Yeah, they, uh, well, I, I think it's part of human nature too, because when you uh, sometimes when you tell them the truth, it scares them. They're like, "Oh, let me think about it." Blah 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 blah. And then some marketers are like, "The do nothing, change your frequency, think about it, and make a seven-figure formula in three hours or less." Click here, pay a hundred dollars, and I'm going to share, give you the checklist. It's like sometimes people force the marketers and salespeople to lie to them. Yeah. You know, but I like, I like the, I like the, the no BS approach, you know, like this is it. This, this is what you need to do. These are numbers. Yeah. And I'm, I'm known for a no BS approach and people really like it. And I just break down the numbers. I'm like, great. You want to make this much money? I'll, I'll, I don't have my, my marker boards like right here, but I'll literally be on a live video and be like, you want to make this much money? Great. What's your price point? Awesome. Based on sales statistics, you have to talk to 5,000 people this month. Do you have a space in your calendar to talk to 5,000 people this month? And they're like, whoa, because apparently nobody nobody says any of this. Yeah. So um, give it to them straight and, uh, you know, uh, deal with it like it is. See, yeah. like it, okay. Just be so honest about, with people. 100%. So what's the solution for the transactional issue? That has to come down to training. And the training is two things. Number one, explaining to people what sales actually is and how to do it properly. So one of the things that I do is I will give examples of good sales versus bad sales. Because at the end of the day, sales is a tool and then you decide how you're going to use it. It's like money. Everybody says money's the root of all evil. That's not even what the Bible <laughs> says. But everybody's like, money's the root of all evil. Money's bad. Money's evil. No, money is a tool. And then you decide how to use the tool. It's the same thing with sales skills. So I think the training has to encompass, and I've been trying to make a point of this. The training has to encompass, this is what sales is when it's done well. Like when you use the skills for good. And this is what it looks like when you use the skills for bad. So people can see the difference in their heads. So I gave the example yesterday um, of, you know, if you're doing outbound and outreach and you're trying to fill your pipeline and somebody's like, I'm not interested. Take me off your list, blah, 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 all that stuff. The, the professional salesperson knows that number one, that doesn't mean anything. It's just a reaction, a very natural reaction because there's a bunch of amateurs out here. Um, and number two, there's a way to handle that. Yeah. So I gave the example of, okay, well, some, I was sending out video emails, huge fan of video email because you just get so much done in a day. And somebody was like, take me off your list. I don't see an unsubscribe button. And I'm like, you got it. I will make sure you're no longer on our email list. The reason you don't see an unsubscribe button is because this is a real email from a real person. By the way, did you get that sales script? that you signed up for. If you didn't, I'll make sure to send it to you now. No, I didn't get it because, um, you know, I just, my business is struggling. I, I can't seem to generate the business. Not a problem. I got you. I'm attaching the sales script. Now I go into qualifying, right? When you say that you're having trouble generating business, do you mean getting the leads or converting the leads? And then they start going into a whole thing. 
I realize that they are not a good fit for right now. So I just send them a YouTube video and let them move on their merry way and I move on to the next one. That is using your sales skills for good. Was I using sales skills? Sure. Was I manipulating the situation? Sure. But as soon as I found out this is not a good fit, they don't have a problem we can solve, they have other stuff going on, you yeah. let them go. Yeah. 100%. Had it been had it been they're a good fit, they have a problem we can solve it, I would have gotten him on a call to go solve the problem. And I don't think people realize the difference. So I think part of the training has to be that. And then of course, actual skills training. For sure, for sure. Um, you talked about um, sales numbers and stats. What are some sales and number stats that people should know to, or what do they, should they reach to be successful at sales? Well, here's what people hate. Only 2% of buyers will buy from you the first time they see you. That is true. They don't realize how many touch points it takes. I think I saw something the other day. I just had them, but it was something like less than half of salespeople follow up more than twice. That's right. But then that doesn't make any sense when you know it's going to take at least seven to get the deal across the table. And so few salespeople get past seven. Half of them don't even get past two. That's right. That is right. And that I, 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 they leave a lot of money on the table. A lot of money, like tons of money on the table. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those stats are very important. This is a stat I heard from a lot of our partners who run Facebook ads that shocks people. So if let's say you're doing like the online marketing thing and I'm all about online marketing funnel systems, automations, love it. Without that stuff, I wouldn't be able to be on this live stream right now. Yeah. Love it. Right. That's the whole point of them. So, but what people don't realize is if you're doing like a launch to a cold list that you run ads to, and I learned this from our Facebook ad partners, it's only a 1% conversion. That's right. And I was like, well, if you did outbound sales, meaning you were calling people, DMing people, like that conversion automatically goes up to 30%. I did not know that. You didn't know that? It's 30. I That's the know. average. That's It's 30. That's the average. It's five because it's five to six times. So if you're doing to a cold list, it's one to 5%, right? And then you had to spend money on ads. Yeah. If you do outbound, it's five to six times more effective, gets better results, and costs you less money. Outbound to a cold list or to a warm list? That was actually stats for a cold list. So if you message 100 people on LinkedIn, you're going to get 30 appointments? No, eventually across the table, you'll get like a 30% response rate, I think. But I think right. the, the actual stat was like, it's five. To, so if, if cold email marketing does a one to 5%, yeah. And cold calling to a cold list is six times more effective. You're looking at around 30%, which is wild. It's just hitting those numbers every day and hitting the KPIs every day. So it won't be like a, hey, it's going to happen immediately. It's just kind of like a tilling the field and the farm, right? Yeah. Because then what ends up happening, if you're hitting your KPIs every day, what happens? This is happening to my team right now. People they, that disappeared in December <laughs> are suddenly all up in their DMs responding to them. Oh, yeah. So over time, that's what you end up hitting. It's not like immediate. It's like a like farming. You have to like till the land, work the soil, work the field. But on average, that's what you're looking at. When I heard that, and that's on a cold list, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Why are people like, this is insane. And then on a warm list, whoa, that's that's like even higher on a warm list. I've seen 30% on a worm list, but I have yeah. not, honest, I, I haven't seen it the 30% the on a cold list, which I would love to see. The stat was for a cold list, right? Which I was I like, really? Yeah. But when then I started thinking about it, I was like, well, I mean, if you're working the KPIs every day, then yeah, yeah. because it kind of starts to snowball. You know yeah. what I mean? That's right. So that's I, right. So I think they meant because of the snowball effect that you eventually get into, that's when you hit that number. Not like a, I'm sending an email and I'm converting 1% in the next week. You got it. You know? Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so 
most people are out there looking for buyers who want to buy right now. And you just said that only 2% are ready to buy now. The rest of them are probably going to buy sometime down the road. Mm -hmm. And you shared also more stats that, again, most people don't even follow up with those people that are a lot more likely to buy further down the road compared to people that um, are buying. What is the big fear with follow-up? Why people hate follow-up? They don't want to be a pest. They don't want to be annoying. And I think it just goes back to what we were talking about previously, a misunderstanding of the statistics, a misunderstanding of the psychology. You said a great quote before we came live. What was it? That most salespeople give up on customers before customers give up on salespeople? Most salespeople reject their customers before the customer rejects them. They don't know that right? They're just wrapped up in their own heads. Like, oh my God, I'm being a bother. I'm being a nuisance. So, you know, the, the biggest issue people have in sales is they're so wrapped up in their own BS, right? And their own insecurities that they're not doing their actual job, which is to help the person, the other person. That's right. That's the biggest say, problem. I'll say you're bothering your customers by not following up. I would but agree. Because they they still have the problem that came to you for, and you sat down and gave, gave yourself a bunch of BS about not following up, you know, and you rejected them before they reject you, and now the guy still has his problem, and you know they just... and the problem's getting worse. Exactly. Or exactly. and I tell my clients this, or somebody else sells them on something mediocre that doesn't actually solve the problem. That's your fault. That's not the prospect's fault. That's your fault. So, Amanda, how do you how do you help people fix this follow up problem? Well, follow up is uh, we teach five different phases of a sales cycle. So we'll take them all the way from the beginning, whether it's prospecting or a lot of times people already have warm leads. They just don't know how to get their attention and work them and move them through a process. And we cover two different kinds of follow up. So the follow up is the last two parts of the sales process. The first follow up is what kind of follow up do you do if they did not buy from you? The second follow-up that we teach is what's the follow-up that you do if they did buy from you? Because man, do they drop the ball there. And I did too for like years because I didn't have the support. So I've been there. So we teach them both, right? Because that's where your money is. That's where a lot of the money is. So if you are following up with people like these people already went through a sales call with you. They've been on your email list for God knows how long they've watched all your YouTube videos at this point. And I think people also don't realize this, right? That they don't realize just how deep a person has gotten into your world before they talk to you. I think if they knew that they would realize, oh, this is an easy close. Absolutely. I don't think they well, realize it. So, so what is the proper way to follow up? How do you properly do it? Not by saying still there, <laughs> still there. <laughs> What's the better way? What do you say then? If you don't, if we don't say that, what do we need to say? Um, I think there's lots of different things that you can do. So for example, on Monday, I followed up with 130 people who I'd had a call with in the last couple of years that I didn't close. Why? Because I currently have a promotion going on. So what did I do? I framed it, not framed it. It's true. I'm like, Hey, I remember you have this problem. I remember the finance was an issue. We're having a promotion this month. I wanted to make sure that you were the first person to know about it. Before I send I this it. out to the before I send it out to 7500 people. So, how did, how did that work out for you? You got a good response? We're getting I mean they're watching those videos, so let's go. <laughs> nice. Big fan video email, right? So speaking of follow up, video email is so great because yes. I like and I'll get to phone calls. I like doing phone calls because nobody gets phone calls anymore and it really gets people's attention. Like I was doing um calls was it in November? I just started calling people from my list cuz I had nothing else to do. I was getting a 30% pickup rate. Yeah. It was wild. And and people were shocked. They're like, oh my God, you actually called me because I bought a $27 product or I signed up for this free. Like nobody does that. Yeah. Well, guess oh, what? We got, now, now you're we sold. Get a lot of, we get a lot of thank you for thinking of me. Thank you. We get yeah. so many thank yous for yeah. the phone calls. Yeah. 
and people think I'm joking. Uh, uh, we're not. You're not. We're not joking. Yeah, I've had the same experience. Yeah. Now the problem with phones is that it's just more time consuming, right? So if we all have multiple things going on, like I have like, we had like 500 people to reach out to on Monday, just on Monday, right? So it was kind of like, okay, well, how do, how can we, and I'm obsessed with efficiency, which is why I like what you do, right? But I'm kind of obsessed with efficiency because I'm like, well, how can we get the most leverage? If I can't be doing a hundred phone calls in a day, me as the owner of a business, other people can do that. But me as the owner of a business, I can't do that. What can I do that is probably just as good as a phone call, gets a very high response rate, and I can track everything they're doing? It's video email. Yeah. What do you use to send video emails? Vidyard is free. <clears throat> What's that? Vidyard, it's free for up to 20 videos. I also use BombBomb for years. There's lots of really great ones. First one was Vineyard? Vidyard. So VID, yeah. oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, Vidyard and bomb bomb, nice, yeah, nice, because that way you can bang out a hundred emails in thirty minutes. At least you know that got done, and then you know then you can start picking up the phone, texting, DMs. Because just yesterday I had like fifteen sales conversations going on in my Facebook DMs, and those just are more time consuming. But then you have all these leads that are sitting over here that somebody needs to reach out to these leads. So I like video email because it, it's very effective and gets it done quick. And they're like, oh, my God, a whole video? Did she really just send me a whole video? Yes, I did. That's right. Love it. That video is very engaging. Very. Uh, I have used a Loom for recording videos. And that's another tool that uh, I guess people could use. That's a good idea. Loom. You know what else works really well? It just requires more thought. Uh -huh. Snail mail. Yo. Snail mail yes. works like a charm. Oh my god, yes. Um, and so one of my favorite tools for that is uh, send out cards. Send out cards, the best. Yep. Yeah, so you easy. Can, like, you could create a campaign, you could customize it. Yeah, they even have handwriting fonts, you can attach gifts. It's beautiful. Yeah, like and it shows up like an Amazon box on your porch. People pick it up, they open it. There's like some, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Cookies or other types of gifts. And there's the thank you note. You can attach pics pictures. It's amazing. Yep. So snail mail works really well. So, I, I mean, it. there's really no excuse. Voice notes, super effective, right? Yep. You can just bang them out real quick. The voice Absolutely. notes, just get on your phone and bang them out when you got 30 yep. minutes. And I think going back to your point, I think people also think this stuff takes more time than it actually does. Yeah. No, and I think doesn't. that's part of what stops them. I want to spend eight hours sending DMs. No, you could get it done in 30 minutes and move on. Yeah, but but then you're sitting around doing nothing for eight hours. Exactly. You're doing and, nothing. And just worrying you're, about things. You're posting. My team was telling me this morning, I don't mean to make fun, but my team was like, you know, I'm in these Facebook groups and I'm noticing the only thing a lot of these women do is post in a Facebook group and then expect that it's going to generate business and it doesn't. Yeah. You know, I don't know if LinkedIn does that in the groups as much, but in Facebook, that's a thing. So like all you did was make one post and get in your energetic frequency. Like, how is that working out for you? And then some of them don't even have like a call to action, even if you post. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's there's probably science into it that we, we need to follow. So, uh, Amanda, we talked about uh, 4Xing your sales through follow up. Mm hmm. What, what are you saying there? How do we do it? What's your approach to that? Well, I'm sure you could probably answer this better than I can. <laughs> but <laughs> right? but um, I think you have to get really organized with a system or a process. Um, and it's frequency, right? That's really what it comes down to. It's how do I get organized with the process so I don't lose my mind? So uh, part, one of the biggest problems I had in my business that I've been trying to solve for the last three years, and people wouldn't think this is a problem, but it is. I had so many leads coming from so many different places and no organized process. It's enough to drive you bonkers because you're like, whoa, 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 what is going on? And it feels like pure chaos. <laughs> and that's because that's I had a big social media following from my first business. And I know how to hustle. So, <laughs> and that's what I did for 10 years is I hustled. So I know a lot of people and I'd built a brand and 
all that kind of stuff. But there was no like organized process for people, which is how I came up with the five step process that I teach people now. I was just trying to solve my own problem, basically, is what I was doing. So I think number one is you got to get clear on what that process is of what leads are moving through. And then you got to make some workflows. So for example, if I don't close somebody for whatever reason, okay, well, now you're getting a tag in my email marketing and CRM system. That's a whole other thing, CRMs and how people don't have them um, and they need them. Uh, And then, you know, there's a workflow. So it'll remind me, some of it is automated because once you're dealing with a massive amount of leads, you just have to. But I'll get reminders like, hey, send this person a video email today, right? Or make sure this person knows about this. Or, you know, and then it's like a campaign. Some of the things are automated, some of them are not. So I think we have to get really hyper crazy organized, which is, I became obsessive about it, kind of crazy obsessive, especially in 2022, because I think, and I'm going to start talking, people just don't have the right systems and processes in place, and then they drive themselves nuts. And then when you don't have the right systems and processes in place, then you can't hit the frequency that you need to hit because it's like a stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. I spent like three years there. It was the most irritating thing in the world. What what's your take on uh, on uh, on how many ways they should follow up? Should they just stick to one way, or should there there be? Oh, I teach my clients sixteen different ways you can get somebody's attention and follow up. You should have an arsenal right. of excuses to reach out to people. So there are sixteen different ways in your book on how to follow up. Yeah, yeah. So we have a product called the Sales Script Vault. It's like twenty seven bucks. And one of the things that we do is we teach our 16 point follow up process. We just start people off with 16 and it's a combination of text, video, email, voice note, snail mail. Um, If you have this going on in the business, here's a message you can do. And that's so so like we'll start people off with 16 just to get them past the like the because some people say it's seven point touch points. Now they say because of social media, it's like 11 to 15. So we're like, let's just get them past the 15. But honestly, like you could do anything. You could do birthdays, anniversaries. Like there's so many freaking excuses to reach out to people. And you can just, for lack of a better term, stalk them on social media and find out what's going on. Send a congratulations. Like there's so many things that you could do for touch points. Um, And it's funny because a lot of my mentors, they're like old school. I mean, they had to like cold call people out of the yellow pages and show up to people's offices. Yeah. to get attention. And they're like, you millennials have it so easy and you guys are complaining. Oh, it's, you know, sometimes I, I think I should go do, do some door knocking to just rebuild some muscles. I mean, you <clears throat> would probably get a lot of freaking attention if you did, because if it's anything like the phone, the reason the phone is so effective right now is because people stop doing it. Yeah. People are sitting at home doing nothing, just playing with their phone. So they would be like, oh my God, somebody's knocking on the door. Let's go. And if you do a double dial, then they think it's like something's like, oh shit, this must be real important. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, One, going back to your anniversary and birthdays, uh, one of my favorite tools is or campaigns is saying, sending birthday emails and anniversary emails. And you could automate that. So it does it all year round. Another one is like going back to send out cards. You could actually automate that. So they get a birthday card on their birthday. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. it's yeah, amazing. Christmas cards, it. holiday, all kinds of stuff you can do. Amazing. So Amanda, tell us about your gift. So the gift that I'm giving away is our, thank you for putting it on the screen. This is one of our outbound sales scripts. So this is what you can use to either convert your social media followers into sales calls, or if you have a database, you can actually start calling people with this script. Uh, We've been giving it away for free for several months. And what's been reported back to us is that people are getting up to a 54% response rate. And you want to know what they're hearing? Thank you. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for asking such great questions. Thank you. No one's ever done this before, which is probably why it has such a high conversion. So that's on the screen. Totally free. Use it. We've tested it on LinkedIn. Um, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, phones, and email. Awesome. Awesome. So gang, if you're watching or listening, the link is going to be in the descriptions of the show of the show and or in the comments on social media. Uh, I cannot spell it out. It's a complicated link. Uh, that's because it's a tracking link 
Amanda is yeah. tracking how many people are going from our show over to her site. So uh, click on the descriptions, or if you're listening to the podcast, it would be the podcast link that you could click on and uh, get access to the free outbound sales script with a 54% conversion rate. That is crazy. Wild. You got to get that. That is wild. wild. Yeah. All right. Go get it and then get a hold of Amanda and work on your sales. The, the, the sooner you make peace with sales, the easier business and life becomes for you. Yep. Either accept it and learn how to play the game or keep fighting it and get played. I should may turn that into a quote from Mustafa. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about AI. What are you doing with AI? How are you using it? How has it changed things for you and the rest of it? So I love this topic. I'm all over YouTube with this topic. I think it's we're really living in some very exciting times for business owners. I did content marketing for eight years. I told you my story. My hands were literally cramping yep. with the amount of content I was doing. So I think there's good news for business owners. I'll start there. And there's bad news for a lot of other people. And I'm not one of these like, I, I just give it, I, I don't sugarcoat. So I'll get there in a second based on my experience. The good news for business owners is I've used it for video scripts, video titles, what kinds of stories to do or shorts. I mean, I'm literally 5Xing my marketing right now and it's costing me almost no time and no money. It's getting better results than the people I was paying thousands of dollars a month to try and figure out. Now, granted, I do have a marketing background and marketing experience, so I probably know how to use the tools better than maybe the average person. That's right. You know, so caveat to that, right? Also, I've had a YouTube channel for a while. There's a lot of data to work with. I know how to read the data and I just go. So I'm in this very unique position where I'm very excited. And a lot of people are not here. But I think this is kind of the goal for a lot of the people online. And I think this applies to a lot of people online. I spent eight years just doing marketing. And then I started specializing in sales. So now I'm just going to use AI to blow up the marketing and I know how to do the sales on the back end. And I automated everything in the middle. Nice. So for me, it's like, yes, perfect timing. Um, now, let me get to the bad news. Because as a former content marketer, it ain't looking good for the marketers out there right now. It's just not. I'm being honest. Like, as a business, like, as content marketer turned business owner, I'm literally shocked at what this AI is able to do. That's number one. And I think you were telling me that you were experimenting with it. And it's just like amazing what it was able to spit out. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like the greatest at sales copy yet, but there's ways around it. You know, people are on it. So it's just a matter of time. So oh, I think yeah. as a business, I hear business owners everywhere being like, oh, I'm about to like triple my marketing and cut my marketing costs at the same time. This is manna from the heavens. Um, but that does lead a big problem for a lot of content marketers, social media marketers, things like that. So I'm going to tell them what I've been trying to tell them for years, which is stop doing that for people and just either go into consulting or teach a man how to fish. There's going to be a lot of people out here who are going to be using AI, don't know how to use it for marketing. And then you can go in and consult or teach them and make money that way. That's right. What, which tools do you use uh, for AI? Um, I'm using vidIQ for YouTube. I was playing around with chat GPT. For, I mean, it made scripts. It made all kinds of stuff. Um, I started playing with copy AI over the weekend, which, by the way, if anybody wants videos of me playing with these things, just go find me on YouTube. <laughs> right. Are you going to walk for it? Um, yeah, I'm just like playing with it and recording myself playing with it and putting it on yeah. YouTube because so many people have asked. Um, and that's what I did when I had COVID. <laughs> I was playing nice. with AI. I was that's sick in bed. Thing. I was, I was sick in bed things. playing with AI. <laughs> no, I mean I've been amazed with it. Uh, so amazed. I, 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 I've, I, I like a little sense of humor in 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 what I do and in, in my copy and here and there. So I was I was testing Chat GPT and I said, make this funny. Put a block of text, and he made it. So for an entire day. I would sit here, go through all of my content, make it, and I was just sitting here laughing my head off. And I really, it actually has a good sense of humor. 
Yeah. And then I, I loved it. Yeah, it was really interesting. Now, I don't think it's taking over sales because human beings, like human beings have a hard time reading each other <laughs> in a sales conversation. I don't know if a machine would ever be able to do it. Or if yeah. you have like seven influencers in a deal, like is a machine going to be able to deal with seven different people? I don't know. Are we ever going to get there? I have no idea. But at least in uh, marketing, yeah, marketers are in trouble. And I know that there's a lot of people out here who are like, oh, it's okay. Just use it to increase your output. I'm like, yeah, but you're still making less money. Like, I mean, uh, I'm just the realist here as someone who's yeah. had eight years in that space and as a business owner who knows how to use this and understands marketing. Oh, so it, I think Chad GPT is probably doing a good half of my work right now. Like, I don't like I write up I, I write up a draft for an email, put it in chat GPT, say fix this. Boom, two seconds done. I copy yeah. paste and it's good. I ask it to uh, give me a description of something, SEO title, SEO description, blah, 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 blah. It, it's amazing. Saves I was telling a, a team member of mine. mine. I have a team member. I started her an admin and then I started teaching her sales. And I was like, I think I saved your entire career by starting to teach you sales. Because a lot of these marketing and admin tasks, AI can handle it. And I did a post the other day. I was like, listen, marketers on my Facebook, a lot of the people that you work for were doing their own marketing before they hired you and they just hired you to save time. Well, the AI takes care of that now. And rather than paying you thousands of dollars a month, they're paying less than a hundred. What do you think they're going to do? Yeah. It's what it is. Love it. So, um, uh, so some of the uh, AI tools that we talked about was vidIQ, ChatGPT, and CopyAI.ai. How is Copy.ai? I haven't used it. I liked it better than um, ChatGPT for Copy. I found it yeah. much easier for it's copy. copy. It's not free, right? But I found it a lot. At least there was more for me to work with. Got Let's it. put it that way. And, and, and Amanda, so, sometimes I use this chat GPT to give me a base on something that I'm writing and then I grab yeah. it and modify it. Right. Of course. Yeah. You have sometimes to. it's got this very dry and annoying text that it writes. And I'm like, that's not me. I need to make it more conversational and more me. And it's good for Google because Google can read when AI wrote it. And, you know, yeah. there's there's going to be so many implications from this, too. Like, we don't even know. Like, plagiarism implications. Everybody's having the same articles. So, like, it's a tool, right? Like, it's like sales. It's the same thing, right? Like, you know, when you're teaching some people sales scripts and then they're, like, obsessed over the sales script and then they sound robotic with the sales script instead of making it their own. This is the same thing just in marketing. That's right. That's right. Good. Can I ask you some personal questions, Amanda? Shoot, I love personal questions. All right. What's a new thing you've tried recently? Big or small? I mean, AI. <laughs> okay. All right. And so far, it seems like you're happy with it. I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. I, I, I was so excited. Like once I started, I was like, oh my God, this is changing business forever. Oh, yeah. Wait until it tell you. Oh, it's, uh, I watched uh, Alex Hormozzi talking about how it may turn into, how it will turn into super intelligence over time. We'll see what happens. You know, just give it some, give it five years, and it's going to do things that are just going to be. The only thing I've, I've been, I've, I haven't been impressed with is uh, I got a few AI machines to create a book cover for me, and I was mm -hmm. not impressed. You weren't it impressed. Give me no. It gave me this messed up thing. I'm like, this is It'll not. It'll get better. <laughs> It'll it will get better, get better though. It will get better. All right. So give me two of your favorite books. It's so hard. I read so many books all the time. Let me make it a little bit easier. A book that has made a big change or massive impact in life or business. Some that maybe you have gifted a lot or talk about a lot. Okay. I'll tell you one that I read recently, which I think is a total game changer. The Nine Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. Laws of prosperity. Nine, yeah. Nine dynamic laws of prosperity. Catherine, Go buy. Like, it's so good. I bought a physical copy. By Catherine, who again? Catherine Ponder. Ponder. All right. And what's then uh, another one. I have three that are tied because they're like okay. my 
my ish yep. just hit the fan books and I need to get it together. So like every time, like when COVID happened, when there's a recession, when I'm having problems in my, like these are the three. Think and grow rich, science of getting rich, 10X rule. Thanks of ring. Science of getting rich and the 10X rule. Love it. I have read Science of Getting Rich, Think and Grow Rich, but I haven't read the other two. Oh, 10X rule is a game changer. Um, Because he just like, a lot of people, this is a big realization I had. And I think Grant himself admits that he's not very good at explaining this. I think he's gotten better. But when, when I know when I first started finding the Grant Cardones and the 10X rules, I thought it meant addition. Like, oh, I'm going to add more stuff to my plate. Like, I'm already exhausted. Are you out of your mind? It's not about addition. It's about leverage. That's right. But most people mistake it for addition because, you know, he's always talking about hustle culture and all that stuff and how hard he works. So people make that assumption. I'm like, it's actually about multiplication and leverage. And that's a different way of thinking. 100%. I'm a huge fan of leverage. Yeah. And that, that could be another two-hour topic right there. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. What advice made a big impact on your life or business? My mother constantly telling me perseverance is omnipotent, which I think she got from a priest. Is, is um, um, omnipotent. Um, omnipotent. And, you what know, do you mean I, by that? omnipotent means like all powerful. Like perseverance is the most powerful thing. Love it. Constantly, like a free, like years she's been telling me that. And then of course, like I didn't realize until literally my early 30s how much of an impact this had. I guess because I grew up in Miami and everybody's Cuban or from Latin America or has some crazy story about how their family got here. I didn't realize that that's not normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, because I just, I was around it all the time. So it was just like a normal thing for me. I didn't realize until like my early thirties when I really started trying to build something that could start running without me and could impact a lot more people, just how much the impact of what my family went through. I'm sure your family probably went through something similar with all the stuff in Iran that's gone on there. Um, how much that has affected my worldview and I didn't realize this, but, and I've, I've done some work around this because it was like not healthy, but now I know how to see it in a healthy way, mm -hmm. which was this idea of like, I'm in the United States and I have access to the internet. If I don't figure out how to make money, that's my damn fault. Yes. hundred percent. So I had like an unhealthy relationship to that because I was putting like a lot of pressure on myself and I didn't realize that was like rooted in a lot of, but now I understand like, okay, like. It's not as intense, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, you know, just just what my family went through and yeah. always telling me, they always told me, my grandparents and my parents always told me growing up, look, the United States is the best country in the world, but you don't even get healthcare here. So get ready to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, or you can move up to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone in my DMs earlier today not happy with the Canadian system. She's like, well, we can't even get a second. Like, it's free, so we can't even get a second opinion. I'm like, it's not free in the United States, and they still don't listen to patients. So I think oh, just yeah. medicine in general is going through some stuff. Absolutely. Um, Amanda, if you had a Facebook or a Google ad where everyone around the globe with access to Internet could see, what would your message be for the people of Earth? Can I sell them something? We could. That's your message. You try. It's my message. All right. I'll tell you something that got crazy results for people. Okay. So I would probably run an ad to another small dollar product that we have called the Media Pitch uh, 365 system. And in it, what I do is I teach people how to pitch the media, but they could also use it for social media. The reason I would do that is because if you know how to get attention, then you can learn how to convert the attention into money. But you need the attention first. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because earlier today, we actually have a new client who joined our sales training this morning. And she told me she bought a $27 product and was making up to $7,500 a month just from what she learned in that $27 product. So that's why I'm saying that because literally earlier today, 
I learned that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, Amanda, this has been an absolutely amazing conversation. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. Is there anything you'd like to add that we maybe forgot to talk about? I think you said it perfectly. I'll, I'll say my version of it, which is like, learn the game or get played by the game. You either accept that everybody is selling something and learn how to sell and use it for good or continue complaining and being broke and not getting anywhere and struggling. I mean, there's that, That's it. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for joining us, gang. Thank you, Amanda. Gang, if you've been watching or listening, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow or like the channel on whichever channel you're watching. Leave a comment, leave a review that helps us get the message out there and bring in more amazing experts and guests like Amanda and the rest of the people that have been on the channel. Thank you for joining us. Uh, have a great week. Grab all the advice that Amanda shared with you and applied and do reach out, download her sales script that gives you up to a 54% conversion rate, reach out, get that $27 training. And yeah. Improve your sales. You, I mean, how far can you get with 27 bucks? Probably three cups of coffee. And if you go to Starbucks and maybe half a cup of coffee somewhere else. Yeah, and according to what someone told me this morning, 27 bucks for 7,500 a month, not bad. <laughs> not a bad return on investment. Not bad. Not too shabby. Thank you, you've been listening to Simple Marketing. I'm your host, Mustafa Husseini. Have a great week and we'll see you on our next episode. Bye now.